no photos, please. I had my necktie in the car, actually. <laughs> nice tie, Mr. Kukurawa. Yeah, nice. It's green, so it looks like for the environment. It goes with our event well. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Uh, I welcome those of you who are here and online, and I uh, start welcoming our guest speaker, uh, Mr. Arjun uh, Mahijani. Uh, he's online. Uh, we can see his face on the screen. He's the president of uh, Institute for Energy and Environmental Research. And then to my very right is Mr. Shinichi Kurokawa. And he's Professor uh, Emirates, uh, High uh, Energy Accelerator Research Organization. Uh, and then uh, to his right is Mr. Junichi Nukushina. He is a representative of Civil Forum uh, on Nuclear Radiation Damage of Japan. And to his right is our uh, interpreter for today's event, Ms. Riso Kumano. My name is Khaldun Azari. I'm former president of this club. And I am a member of PAC committee who organized this press conference for you. And today's event is about the uh, uh, claimed the scientific problems with the ALPS water treatment plan uh, that is established in Fukushima. All right. All right, we have the logo now. Shall I repeat or it's okay? All right. I can repeat if you want. <laughs> but anyway, our uh, session will be uh, rather uh, short. And uh, I think you all know about the situation. And uh, you read our notice. And we have also distributed flyers to everybody. All details are there. And our event will be about 30 to 35 minutes, uh, followed by Q&A. I would like to open the floor first uh, to Mr. Arjun, please. Thank you. Please speak online. region countries in favor of the government of Japan and I and I hope to demonstrate this and I welcome your questions about it 
uh, Japan's position that the Japan uh, that the Pacific region is one society that can make dis decisions for everybody opens the door to ecological chaos. Anybody can say, you know, the Pacific region or the whole world is one society, so I can dump anything I want and I judge it to be beneficial. This is very harmful reasoning. This reasoning was there, not in those words, but very clearly in the letter that was sent to the Pacific Islands Forum by the Japanese government, um, I, I believe at the end of June uh, this year. The, the radiological environmental impact statement, among others, um, is seriously deficient and the IAEA has largely relied on it. There are also other scientific deficiencies that I'm going to talk about. Um, this is not the only insult to the oceans, as you know. Uh, the oceans are extremely stressed. This is the UN decade of the oceans. Um, scores of countries have just signed a treaty to protect the oceans. There are already uh, two treaties of long standing to protect the oceans. And that is because the oceans are under siege from so many different directions. It's time to stop the idea that dilution is a solution to pollution. And the expert panel, so I'm one of the members of the expert panel appointed by the Pacific Islands Forum. Today I'm drawing on that experience and our, on our common judgment, but I'm speaking for myself today. Uh, these slides have not been reviewed. There hasn't been time for everybody to review everything. And, but I largely draw on the panel's work. Uh, the statements are my own. However, feel free to quote the slides or anything I say today. Thank you very much. Uh, after that introduction, why do I say that the plan, the TEPCO dumping plan, violates the justification requirements and guidance in the IAEA? So the IAEA announced a series of seven documents which they said they would judge this plan by. Um, among those documents is the document which is called the Fundamental Safety Principles. Fundamental Safety Principle number four on justification requires that any activity that's going to cause harm must yield an overall benefit. Uh, so um, the general safety guide, the guidelines are there to explain what these principles and requirements mean. And uh, that guide GSG8 explains, um, and I have quoted it, the justification is a process of determining whether a practice is overall beneficial. Um, expected benefits to individuals and society from introducing or continuing the practice outweigh the harm. So you have to actually calculate uh, benefits, if there are any, and harm, and not only radiation harm, so including radiation detriment, but other kinds of harm as well. So this is a very broad interpretation by the IAEA of the safety principles number four. Uh, countries in the Pacific region will suffer some harm. Now, the IAEA may say it's extremely small or negligible or very tiny. Uh, whatever adjective you want to use, it will be non-zero. Uh, moreover, there is non-radiation harm uh, and that harm has already occurred. And so the harm is non-zero. There's no argument about that, uh, to my knowledge. But the Pacific region countries will receive no benefits. Thus, the harm outweighs the benefits. It's very clear the, satisfy, the, the requirement that benefits should outweigh the harm is not met, and the plan is not justified. So this, this is a fundamental thing that the expert panel brought up repeatedly with the IAEA, with the government of Japan, and with TEPCO. We were privileged to, uh, by being appointed, to have direct discussions multiple times with them. And um, we have been extremely di disappointed, including me, extremely disappointed that these considerations were not taken seriously and they are there in multiple documents that we have sent both to the IAEA and to the government of Japan. 
uh, after one of the discussions we had with the government of Japan and TEPCO, the Pacific Islands Forum asked Japan to explain how it justified this, because the IAEA said that it was basically for the government to examine the justification requirement and not for the IAEA. I'll come to that point in a moment. The letter that Japan sent, the government of Japan sent to the Pacific Island Forum, to which the expert panel for the members of five responded in detail, basically said that Japan need not evaluate the harm to every country. Basically, that it was going to regard the Pacific region as one society, and on that basis, it claimed the dumping is justified because the the dumping would facilitate decommissioning of the whole society, and that would benefit Japan and the whole Pacific region. Now, even if this statement is correct that it would benefit the whole region, Japan has unilaterally decided for all the countries in the region by saying it's all one society, but not accorded any decision-making rights to those countries. In my opinion, this is an unacceptable and shocking statement, especially coming from Japan, uh, but coming from any country, it would be shocking. Um, we can imagine if China made this statement today um, or North Korea made this statement, you know, uh, what Japan or the United States might say. Um, but Japan has said they're going to decide for everybody, basically, that it's all one society, and they decide that it's beneficial. Now, that statement is not even accurate, scientifically speaking, and I will come to that point. But this is not only a failure of TEPCO and the government of Japan, it's a significant failure of oversight by Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority. And they have been present in our meetings. And um, prior to our raising the justification question, there was no evidence that Japan had considered uh, just principle number four or general, saf uh, general safety guidance number eight uh, that I have just quoted. Basically, it opens the way for anybody to dump anything in the ocean and say that they are deciding on the benefits of the whole for the benefit of the whole society without actually consulting them or consulting them. The Japanese might say they have consulted, but basically they've decided for everybody despite objections. We raise this question with the IAEA because the IAEA is supposed to give its blessing or not to this enterprise. Now, we understand the IAEA is not the decision-making authority. They've said so, and we agree with that. But clearly, Japan could not do this if the IAEA had said, wait, we don't think it is justified according to our principles. But the IAEA's position is very strange, in my view, in that they said they are not going to consider justification. They said this in writing, and they emphatically said it during our meeting a couple of months ago. The reason is they said we were invited to review the, dis, uh, the, the, uh, the management of this water after the decision to dump had been made, and therefore the dis justification requirement is a part of the government of Japan and not the responsibility of the IAEA. This opens a giant loophole. Anybody can decide to do something that is clearly not justified, and this dumping is clearly not justified, and then invite the IAEA. And the IAEA said, well, it's already decided to do it, and we'll only look at how to minimize the harm from doing it, and we're not going to look at whether it is justified. So basically, the IAEA has abandoned its key principles of justification, as I'll argue, they've also abandoned optimization. The other thing that was surprising to me, and the first time I saw that so explicitly, was in the final report the IAEA issued last month, uh, that they're not going to look at the non-technical aspects of the harm, the kind of harm that occurred in Korea recently, South Korea, when people, on the announcement of the decision, to start dumping, started panic buying sea salt, and the 
prices of sea salt skyrocketed. As you know, sea salt is used to make kimchi and other traditional Korean cuisine. And there was demonstrable social and economic harm even before the dumping started. But the IAEA has has said in their final report that they're not going to consider non-technical issues, even though these non-technical issues are part of their own requirements and guidance, which I have just quoted to you. And, you know, the references to the GSG-8 and fundamental safety principles, they're all there in the IAEA documents. I'd be happy to supply them to you. There's or this, so this is outside of the damage to the fishing communities in Japan. This is damage to the other countries, societies, and people's cultures and economies in the region. Now, there are a number of scientific deficiencies in, in TEPCO's work. And we have, the expert panel has been raising this repeatedly for well over a year uh, in writing and in repeated meetings. Uh, as far as the environmental impact assessment that TEPCO has done, we have said this dumping will not reach equilibrium in the ocean floor because it's not a one-time act. It is an act that will go on for 30 years. And if the reactor cores are not removed, the waters may be generated for a lot longer than that. I will call your attention to the Three Mile Island decommissioning where there was a partial meltdown of one reactor um, that accident happened in 1979, and the decommissioning of that reactor is not expected to be completed till 2037, so 58 years. Um, so reconcentration of radionuclides will occur in the sediments. Uh, depending on the radionuclide, it could be thousands of times or hundreds of thousands of times. So the idea that the ALP system will clean it up and it will be okay after dilution is ecologically an incorrect idea because reconcentration will occur in the oceans. It's not enough to say that the doses to human beings are, are going to be small. The IAEA principles and requirements also require the protection of the environment. Um, as regards tritium, they said, well, you know, tritium impacts are going to be small, 1,500 becquerels per liter. We provided them with a scientific study that showed the damage to fish eggs uh, occurs at 500 becquerels per liter of tritium concentration, one third. Now 500 becquerels per liter will be there close to the discharge pipe. It won't be there far from the discharge pipe, but it will be there for 30 years or more. This scientific evidence has been ignored. In fact, the whole reproductive food web in the oceans has not been properly considered. And on the basis of this deficient assessment, both the Nuclear Regulation Authority and the IAEA has given the idea that the impact will be negligible. Um, there are other scientific problems. We raised consistently that the sampling of the tanks is biased. Um, TEPCO doesn't really know what is in the contents of the tanks. We also raised this with the IAEA. And basically, both TEPCO, Government of Japan, and IAEA said it doesn't matter that we don't really know what is in the tanks now because we're going to measure uh, everything just before the dumping and make sure it's in conformity with the, with the rules that we have set up. Well, it's not clear that ALPS has been tested adequately for all the contents of the tanks because the contents of the tanks are not known. In fact, it's my opinion that we know that some, some of the con tanks contain sludges, particle, particulates at the bottom that may be stirred up when the water is withdrawn. It could clog up the filters. There's no evidence that serious testing of the ALP system has been done uh, with water from tanks and the sludges. The first discharges, you know, I don't know what water was used, but, you know, I would uh, bet a dime to a dollar that it was not water withdrawn from the tanks with sludges close to the sludge layers. That is a very big problem issue because lots of tanks that were filled in the first two or three years at least. And the ALP system has worked sometimes and it has not worked sometimes. It, 
the, the system, filtration system was not very thorough for the first few years, and there are quite a few indications that the filtration system did not work consistently until 2018, which is why many tanks have quite high levels of radioactivity. The IAEA also did not consider safety principle number five and optimization that requires in part that if you're going to have radiation harm, you should keep that harm as low as reasonably achievable. It's called the ALARA principle. And um, uh, you, if you can lower the doses beyond what your action is, and it's reasonable, you should do that. Uh, the IAEA's optimization assessment, it did do one, but it restricted only to reducing the harm from the dumping, not to alternatives, which is also the normal practice um, in considering as low as reasonably achievable, keeping doses as low as reasonably achievable. Uh, so the expert panel, um, you know, the, the the examples of poor science and the IAEA kind of ignoring the poor science are exemplified by Director General Grossi posing for a photo feeding commercial fish food to experimental fish, knowingly or unknowingly complicit in poor science. In fact, our ocean expert on the expert panel said, I will help you to design good experiments uh, that will allow you to determine uh, the the impact of this dumping on the food web, but that offer was was resisted and refused. Um, the, in regard to optimization, I, I should say that we published a paper on concrete. Uh, when we did so, TEPCO and Japan said, we have already considered it, but the concrete proposal they had considered was very different from what we said, and we have said that we would also reject the concrete proposal that TEPCO rejected. What we proposed was very simple. We proposed that the water be filtered um, by the ALP system as TEPCO now proposes. And once filtered, it would have mainly tritium and the tritium should be used to make concrete for useful purposes that has low potential for human contact. I myself did the dose calculations from concrete and the doses from tritium from such a procedure would to the public would be essentially zero. There would be no dumping, of course, and therefore, even if the concrete fell apart, the tritium beta particles are weak enough that even from the particles of concrete, they, they would not penetrate and affect the public. Therefore, we, we, we are mystified that having an option available that would meet the requirements, the option was both dismissed without serious consideration, both by the IAEA and by, the, uh, by TEPCO and the government of Japan and the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Thank and you. let me close by yeah. making some general remarks. Um, the IAEA has basically abandoned some of its own key principles and guidance in favor of the government of Japan and has abandoned the interests of the countries of the Pacific region. Uh, the rejection of the concrete option is a disservice both to the fishing communities in Japan and to the Pacific region. We have to put an end to the idea that dilution is a solution to pollution. Just because other countries are are doing it does not just that is dumping tritium contaminated water into the oceans does not justify Japan's decision. We hoped and said a number of times that Japan should be exemplary and other countries should look to stop the dumping. Uh, look, and IAEA has never looked at this um, uh, international aspect in the sense of justification, harm to other countries from the dumping of a member country, uh, but it is time to do it. Uh, Non-Japanese members of the IAEA, I think, should hold the IAEA to account for abandoning their interests and its own requirements. Uh, Japan's unilateral decision is perhaps the most serious problem in this whole affair because it opens the door to any country 
doing anything to the oceans in terms of radioactivity and justifying it and asking the IAEA for their imprimatur, which the IAEA has unfortunately given. I think Japan, not significant harm has not yet been done, even though the dumping has started. Japan could still stop and adopt, let's see, at least seriously evaluate the concrete option before any further action for Thank dumping you. is taken. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, Kurkawson. Please. You have a short. Oh, please. Finish this on. Thanks. Ah, uh, everyone, konnichiwa. Eh, Hoshita Sen Hibako Gakushu Suru Kai no eh Nukushina Junichi to moshimasu. Eh, 10 nen mai kara eh kono Fukushima Hibako Fukushima genpa to kono monday nitsuite eh Hibako Gakushu Kai wo Tokyo de kaisai shite kimoshita. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Junichi Nukushina. I'm with the Civil Forum on Nuclear Radiation Damages in Japan. Since the summer of 10 years ago, we have been holding monthly study sessions on radiation damages in Tokyo. Since the COVID-19 pandemic, we have switched to online study sessions, and we sometimes have more than 200 participants. えっと、で、まあ、あの、潜水の海洋放出というあの、今までま核の被害国だった日本が核の加害国になるという重大な問題でもあります。で、私たちは、え、今回 あの、え、他の市民団体に呼びかけまして、158団体連盟で、え、岸田首相に対し、え、この海洋放出を中止するように、え、申し入れました。で、どうして私たちがそういう、え、申し入れをしたのか、これからご説明したいと思います。the discharge of contaminated water into the ocean is a grave issue whereby Japan will turn into a nuclear offender state from a nuclear victim state. We have reached out to other citizens groups and a total of 158 organizations have jointly called on Prime Minister Kishida to stop the discharge into the ocean. I would now like to explain why we demanded that the discharge be stopped. すみません、遅れない。え、私たちが海洋放出の中止を求めたのは え、正当化されていないということです。それで、え、正当化というのはですね、あの、ICRPが決めている防護の三原則、その筆頭です。The um, reason why we have called for a stop to the ocean discharge is because it's not justified. Justification is the first of the three principles of protection set forth by the ICRP, the International Commission on Radiological Protection. このえ、それが放射線のリスクを上回る場合のみ認められるという大原則です。This chart is taken from the documentation made by the Ministry of the Environment of Japan. It is the fundamental principle that the act of using radiation is acceptable only if the benefits or the advantages outweigh the risks of the radiation. かなり。え、先月 
On the 8th of last month, the IAEA's comprehensive report was handed to Prime Minister Kishida. On page 18 of the report also clearly states that justification is a fundamental principle and that activities giving rise to radiation risks must yield an overall benefit than harm. On pages 18 to 19, citing the guideline GSG-8, the report states that justification goes far beyond the scope of radiation protection and also involves the consideration of economic, societal, and environmental factors. This includes not only the damage caused by radiation exposure, but also the reduction in demand for fishery products and import bans. That should be considered as part of the harm. で、IAEAは海洋放出に汚染付きを与えたというふうに言われますけれども、実は放活報告書の19ページにはですね、海洋放出の正当化については評価していないと、IAEAは評価していないと。で、それは日本政府がやるべきことだというふうに書かれています。
Okay, yeah. my name is Kurokawa, and I add uh, some point in addition to uh, the two gentlemen's talk. Why the uh, government of Japan fortified G7 communicates? Okay, uh, just uh, I wrote down uh, some kind of uh, three words uh, which is uh, not uh, used correctly, uh, but I, in order to reduce the time, I skip this part and going to the G7 communiques in April and in May have been falsified. Okay, this one is, uh, top part is uh, the original G7 communiques and the bottom part is uh, the fortified Japanese translation. Uh, but I translated it back to English again. And if you look at it, um, the original communique says, we support the IAEA's independent review to ensure that the discharge of advanced liquid processing system, ARPS treated water, will be conducted consistent with the IEA safety standard, etc., etc., which is essential for the decommissioning of the site and the reconstruction of Fukushima. Uh, but this translated, if I translated it into, I translated the fortified Japanese uh, translation back to the English, it becomes like this. We support the IAEA's independent review to ensure that the discharge of advanced liquid processing system treated water that is essential for the decommissioning of the site and the reconstruction of Fukushima. Uh, this is a great uh, amount of uh, the falsification. Also, uh, already this one is uh, pointed out by Nukushina-san, uh, but IAEA Comprehensive Report, page 19, states that, therefore, the scope of the current IAEA safety review did not include an assessment of the detail of the justification process followed by the government of Japan. And the government of Japan has a final decision-making authority to determine how to handle the treated water and how that decision is justified. So, notwithstanding the justification of the final choice of how to manage the ARCS treated water stored at FDNPS is extremely relevant for many stakeholders and merits a clear explanation from the government of Japan. Merits means that it deserves. So, Japanese government should explain uh, why government has justified uh, this case, uh, treated water, uh, dumping of the polluted water. And also, uh, note on the dialogue between Japan and PIF expert panel on June 1. This was, uh, Dr. Makujani already pointed out this one, but it is said that further paragraph 2.3 of the ESG 9 states that justification applies to the overall practice and not to individual aspects of the practice such as discharges. In this case, discharge is an independent aspect. This is quite interesting, quite funny. The GOG understands that the discharge of ARPS treated water corresponds to individual aspects and the commissioning of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station corresponds to the overall practice. So, Japanese government insist that government doesn't need to justify the dumping of the polluted water into the ocean. So this is the conclusion, my summary. Within the framework of IAEA, government of Japan should justify the Alps treated water discharge. GOG insists that this discharge does not need to be justified since it is individual aspect of the overall practice, overall practices, namely the discommissioning. 
I suspect that the reason why the government of Japan needed to falsify the G7 communiques translation into Japanese is to show that the discharge of Alps treated water is essential, essential for the decommissioning of the site. The decommissioning, decommissioning as a whole has yet to be justified. Therefore, the government of Japan does not only comply with IAEA standards, but also will D7 agreement shown in the communiques that the discharge will be conducted consistent with IAEA safety standards. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. We'd like to open the floor uh, to questions and answer. If you have any question, please raise your hand and uh, proceed to the mic and uh, state your name and affiliation and please make uh, your question short and to the point. And one question, please. Thank you. ありがとうございます。あの、中国がですね、あの、問題のある というふうに思われていると思うんですけれども、その点ですね、日本の中でこれがストロンチュームの水だけだ、水だと言われていることについて、お三方はどう思うか、大きくしていただけないでしょうか。Thank you. According to Japanese media, including the so-called uh, liberal media outlets like Asahi and uh, Mainichi Shimbun, they seem to paint this as uh, a water that meets the international standards uh, in terms of the levels of strontium included in Alps-treated water. And therefore, uh, countries like China, uh, which, has, which have imposed import bans, are being criticized by media, including Asahi and uh, Mainichi. But when it comes to the treated uh, I, water... I, I'm so sorry, I, I made a mistake. Uh, it was uh, tritium instead of strontium. Mm. Sorry about that. Oh, it's tritium. Um, in terms of the treated water, the tritium levels are th somewhat measured, but as for other types of radionuclides, it's not known as to what exactly are included and how much. Not even TEPCO has uh, clarified that or clearly investigated that. And in a way, uh, there's no way of uh, knowing for sure. So the discharged water that contains certain amount of tritium, uh, the dis water discharged by countries like um, China and Korea, that is quite different in terms of the nature of the water compared to the, in terms of the um, discharge of water to be done by Japan. It might, uh, on appearance, look similar, but in fact, it's quite different uh, because of uh, the unknown factors of what is really contained in the discharged water. So even though uh, the water is not completely or perfectly treated, um, except for tritium, uh, it's, it's 
the discharge water might still contain other problematic uh, substances. So I, my question is, I'd like to ask all three of you uh, with, what you think of this uh, Alps-treated water itself. Well, um, should I answer this? We've looked at this question uh, in great detail at the expert panel. Um, if, first of all, as I said, the Alps uh, system has not functioned um, consistently over the years, and it has not been tested adequately for the various kinds of water, and the knowledge of what's in the water now is not adequate. Uh, that said, um, the water is going to be filtered, uh, and even if the ALP system works as designed or as hoped, there will be other radionuclides other than tritium and carbon-14. There will be some strontium-90, there will be uh, some uh, other radionuclides, cesium-137, cobalt-60, and so on. Um, the claim is that their concentrations will be very small because there will be a lot of dilution with seawater. On the face of it, this is correct. But what we have said is the ecological considerations after discharge have not been properly taken into account. I gave you an example of cobalt-60. Cobalt-60 can concentrate to more than 300,000 times in sediments, so that it's not enough to say that the concentrations of these other radionuclides are going to be very low. Moreover, we have pointed out, and I mentioned this in my slides, that 1,500 becquerels per liter of tritium is not a negligible concentration. Uh, international standards generally have not considered reproductive impacts. That's why I wrote a whole book on tritium called Exploring Tritium Dangers, which I think will be published in Japan in, in the coming months. Um, that reproductive impacts are extremely important and they have been demonstrated to be negative. Fish eggs have been demonstrated to be harmed at 500 becquerels per liter, which is one-third the, the, the discharge. So the whole environmental impact process has been very deficient and the, the judgment that the impact even on radioactivity will be negligible, is not scientifically sound. That's part of the reason one may understand from TEPCO, which wants to go ahead and dump, but for the IAEA to have ignored all of this after it was pointed out should be scandalous, and I think the IAEA is going to face some loss of reputation as a result. Thank you. Okay. So, do you have a comment? えっとで、いうことがわからない、言えない限りやっぱりやっちゃいけないんだということはやはり放射能がいかにあの危険なものであるかちゃんとわかっていないということが前提としてあると思います。だからこの福島の汚染水についてはセイトカできていない以上、これは絶対に
or there's no scientific proof as to what kind of damages uh, radioactive, radioactive materials um, contained in the water can cause. Uh, we need to have justification. That is why IAEA and ICRP require justification um, review. So the damage of, when it comes to the damage of radiation exposure, uh, the benefit must overweigh the harm. Unless you can say for sure, then you shouldn't be exposing, we shouldn't, uh, uh, there should be no exposure to radiation. You really need to understand the dangers of radiation. Um, so in the case of uh, discharge of water from Fukushima, uh, since the justification is not done, I would say that um, it should not be done, the discharge should never be done. That is all uh, I wanted to say. Thank you. Okay, so uh, may I? Okay, uh, <coughs> I mentioned one thing. Uh, just uh, probably uh, you know uh, that very famous uh, Chinese philosopher Confucius. Uh, he said in Japan. Uh, he said one thing, and uh, in Japanese, "Nao uh, tadase." If I translated this uh, word into the English, uh, this is we should use the correct words. And the point is that the Japanese government and the Japanese media use the treated water, but in reality, it is not a treated water. It is a radioactive polluted water. And so it is very important for us to use the correct words. This is a very, very important issue for the democratic country and democracy or the democracy. And that is my uh, point. Other point, scientific point is I agree with the other two uh, persons. Thank you. Yes, please. And then you. Uh, Scott Foster from Asia Times. Uh, if you can answer this, uh, the statement from the Japanese government is that uh, the discharge or the dumping of the treated water uh, would be essential for decommissioning and the reconstruction of Fukushima. Now, on the face of it, that seems like a, a problem of physical arrangement of water tanks and uh, uh, something simple like that. And I don't know the answer. Do you? Mm -hmm. What yes, I do know the answer to this. Um, of course, we have considered this uh, thing in detail before unfolding all these criticisms. Uh, some of the criticism would stand on the science. Basically, the Japanese government says that there's no room on the site to build more tanks. Decommissioning requires the emptying of the tanks to make room for other decommissioning activities. Uh, the expert panel didn't accept this. There's could be room for more tanks, but even if you accept this judgment that emptying the tanks is necessary for other decommissioning activities, and so it is justified because decommissioning is in the interests of society, uh, the, we proposed specifically, we even wrote a paper on the concrete option explaining exactly what it is, and we demonstrated that the concrete option could be achieved without dumping. It could be achieved with essentially zero radiation doses. And we even looked at the concrete production in Japan and the cement production in Japan to show that it could be completed in much less than 30 years. So if emptying the tanks and decommissioning of the site is the justification, then they should have looked at the concrete option very seriously instead of dismissing it with perfunctory excuses that did not amount to a serious evaluation. We did a serious evaluation and we believe if, even if the dumping issues are ignored, that the decommissioning would be much better promoted by doing uh, filtering the water, 
producing concrete. It could be completed in five to 10 years, in my opinion. And I have done the calculations on this pretty carefully, and my colleagues have also done and reviewed my calculations. Thank you very much. So there is a very good answer to this question, and I believe that the Japanese government has not addressed, uh, has rejected the con concrete option in not very good faith. Why did they reject that, in your opinion? Well, they, they, um, they raised a number of excuses. When we first raised it, they said we have already considered the concrete option and gave us a 2016 document in which they, they uh, proposed as one option for the water to mix it with a concrete-like substance and dump it as waste in the ground without treatment of the water. Now, there's quite a lot of experience, including in the United States, and I'm very familiar with it, that mixing highly radioactive water, and a lot of the tank water is highly radioactive in concrete, and putting it in the soil is a recipe for environmental problems. There have been many from such activities in the United States. So I would have also rejected that option, and we have said so in writing. The option we proposed is not that. We proposed filtering the water first, which is the same as what TEPCO proposes, and then making concrete with it instead of ocean dumping. Then they said that the salt content is very high. Well, they're filtering the water. There's reverse osmosis. Uh, concrete can tolerate some amount of salt. Then they said it's against the regulatory requirements that um, concrete would be have to be treated as radioactive waste. Well, there's a lot of soil that they proposed <laughs> to dispose of. Um, we are to, they could ask for a change in the regulations, but they never suggested that they could do that. The, um, they are making a lot of concrete and using it for shore protection and on the site. Um, expert panel members who have visited it saw that. Um, they should at least have made an independent expert evaluation of the proposal and stop the dumping for the time it took for a serious public debate. Uh, in my opinion, they have dismissed the option in bad faith and they have uh, not given it the consideration it deserves because they, they have been determined from long before. And the IAEA also has been uh, indicated that it had decided that dumping was okay, even before the panel uh, to review uh, the problem was appointed. Uh, Director General Grossi said in April 2021 that everybody is doing it, it's international practice, and so, um, you know, Japan's practice is in line with what everybody is doing. As I've said, if everybody, if everybody leaves dog poop in the street, it doesn't mean it's good practice. It's not good practice, and it's not justified, and it's not accord with the regulations. Well, the Japanese Thanks. government did not consider the concrete option in good faith. Thank you very much. Next question, sure. please. Make short, please. We extend the session about 10 minutes. Thank you. Nishimura with Hokkaido Shimbun. My question goes to Dr. Uh, Makijani. Makijani. Yeah. Um, uh, the, Jap the Japanese government emphasizes that the uh, treated water is diluted enough under the level of 1,500 becquerels per liter. So uh, you refer to uh, the possibility that the, uh, the treated water have an impact on the fish eggs. And uh, it says that the, the, the possibilities does not appear to have been taken into account. So I would like to ask you about the details of that uh, study. Uh, or what kind of fish is uh, impacted, ha had an impact, or uh, what is the difference between the uh, impact on fish eggs and impact on fish body itself? Thank you very much. 
Yeah, so uh, fish eggs is just one example for tritium. Uh, I believe I will send the paper on uh, to the Japanese correspond for for Foreign Correspondence Club, uh, and they will they will pass it on to you, and you can read it for yourself. The the fish egg that were in consideration to my memory were eggs of carp, um, which is quite a common fish which is consumed. Um, but I'm not talking about consumption by human beings, I'm talking about the reproductive cycle and that's just one example. Um, and the Japanese government has not considered reproductive impacts in the food web. Uh, and generally reproductive impacts of tritium have been ignored as I wrote extensively in my book and I'd be happy to send that book along as well. And as I've said, tritium is not the only radionuclide. Dilution will reduce the concentrations of other radionuclides very greatly. However, the reconcentration problem and the non-equilibrium problem in the ecosystem is very grave. And all our attempts to point to the latest science on that, especially from Dr. Robert Richmond um, from the laboratory in, in the University of Hawaii, were rejected. That's part of the reason why I say this is bad faith, is because if you were approaching things in good faith, in good scientific spirit, you would examine the paper, you would have examined the reproductive effects, you would have taken up the offer to, to at least see what experiments are proposed that would yield a better assessment of ecosystem impacts. But all of these things were summarily rejected without discussion. Thank you. Actually, on the same issue, I received a question online from Denis Dennis Normile, um, Science Magazines. He asked also about the impact on the eggs of the fish, but he, uh, he also asked, will anyone monitor the actual impact on fish eggs that, uh, ocean, uh, in the ocean near the discharge uh, point? And if they found any impact, do you think that will, uh, they will stop the discharge or the dumping? Thank you. Well, part, part of the problem is that once the dumping starts, you know, it, it takes a long time to discover the impacts. The, um, the It's a statistical phenomenon after all. Uh, some will be impacted. When I said fish were harmed at 500 becquerels per liter, it was a fraction of the eggs that were harmed. And so monitoring the ocean and measuring tritium is quite hard, very costly. It would have to be done over a period of years and decades and at that time it will be too late to do anything once you have discovered the harm you have already done it and it cannot be reversed and the tragedy is that there is an option available that would avoid all that it's no use to dump harm and then say oops there's harm what are you going to do after that i i have seen no proposal from the government of japan that if they discovered they are wrong what the remedy would be other than possibly handing out money. Thank you. That I, doesn't solve the ecological problem. Thank you. I have uh, also another question online from Fred Vargas. He's a uh, freelance. Uh, he says, a Korean investigative news agency, the TAMSA, has implied that Japan and the uh, IAEA have made a deal and even that there could be some corruption involved. Do you think there's the case? Maybe, uh, well, well, I will let my friends. Japanese colleagues answer yeah. this. You know, uh, I, cool I have not investigated this particular problem. Like, I've heard about it, but I don't know. Can you translate in Japanese, please? I, I don't know. <laughs> this one is uh, just a, uh, I heard about this kind of thing uh, that I don't have any kind of uh, the evidence, so I cannot judge. All right. Okay, L last, last question online from, uh, yeah, just a minute, from uh, Karine Nishimura. She's Radio France and Liberation. Uh, she asked that uh, it seems there's no good solution for the Alps water, no matter what. Uh, they are, uh, opposition and support. Uh, do you see a procedure that could legitimize any decision like... Uh, well, I, I don't agree that there is no good solution. There's no good solution in the sense of, you know, what if we did not have the accident? 
We've had the accident. We've got more than 1 million tons of contaminated water, some highly contaminated. So there's going to be no, you know, solution, with, with, which is perfect. But uh, I have, the expert panel has for more than one year insisted that filtering the water and making concrete with the water with low potential for human contact is uh, the best solution that we can think of. Um, it it, it will demonstrably have zero radiation doses, and of course, by definition, it will not involve ocean dumping or any of the impacts we've talked about. So I don't understand why uh, the questioner says that there's no solution or no good solution, and uh, basically, I don't know if the implication is that dumping cannot be avoided, but it can be avoided and it should be avoided. Thank you. One sec once more. You are arc times? Yes, arc times. What so does that mean? Uh, yeah, let me ask a, a question. Uh, arc time, I'm, uh, I'm told you what I with arc time. It would be easier for you to understand yes. Christian in English. So I, I'm going to translate my, my English quickly to Japanese okay. later. So, so my question is a, a little bit uh, related to the earlier questions, but uh, all the Three of you, all of you are very critical about the IAEA decision to uh, support Japanese uh, uh, if I, uh, ass assessment on the water. But, uh, so, but given the fact that the Japan is a number three contributor to IAEA, uh, following United States, China, and Japan. So United States, 22%, uh, around 22%. China about 11 percent, and Japan contribute uh, to about 8 percent, as I remember correctly. Do you think those fact that the Japanese government large influence on IAEA effect had some impact on IAEA decision, and it was biased because of that? And and Japan is used to uh, uh, Mr. Amano from Japan used to be a Secretary General of. IAEA, so Japan has large influence when it comes to our election, in, especially in IAEA. So do you think IAEA bi biased because of those Japanese politi political influence? So Nihon wa dai sekai dai sai no kyoshitsu koko de IAEA ni taishite hijou ni okei kiroko omotte ite Amano san toyu kako ni jimu kyokushou mo dashite iru to. De, ma, Amerika, Chugoku, Nihon toyu jumban nan desu kere do mo それ I would say, you know, this is the normal functioning. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States functions in the same way. The nuclear in industry con contributes for its own inspections. The overall scheme of country contributions, I think, um, should not be, be confused with this particular case. Um, there is a problem in the way the IAEA is funded. I think it, you know, if it is funded for promoting nuclear activities. There, I think, is the real problem. So the IAEA is not strictly a regulatory body. We had the same problem in the United States where the Atomic Energy Commission was regulating and promoting, and that was found to be a pretty bad idea. There were cover-ups, there were safety scandals. The IAEA is charged by its charter with promoting nuclear energy. And I would suspect, and this is for Mr. Grossi to answer and Mr. Amano, that you know, saying it is normal international practice and therefore uh, it should be okay for Japan to dump is, is, um, is basically in line with not wanting to challenge the normal practices of the nuclear industry because it would conflict with the promotion of the nuclear industry and impose costs on the nuclear industry when it's already uh, got economic problems and economic viability issues. So I think that is where the larger IAEA problem lies. I don't know ab about the various specific contributions, but I think this is a lesser issue for me and the conflict of interest and the expert panel has pointed out we had the job of assessing this independently whether you are for or against nuclear power and some uh, uh, we there are a variety of views on the expert panel but 
the IAEA is not neutral about nuclear power, and I think that is a huge issue. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, my point is a little bit different, and I read uh, the final report by IAEA, and then it is quite a, many parts are quite ambiguous, and so and I feel some kind of attitude of the IAEA. Uh, what kind of attitude? The kind of attitude. Let us support, let us not be against the Japanese government. I can feel these kind of things just by using, uh, you reading IAEA's final report. That is my answer. Sure. Say something in that regard. That's why I also said that the IAEA has abandoned the interests of Pacific region countries in favor of the government of Japan. And that is a very, very poor outcome for the IAEA and for the world that depends on the IAEA. It's not easy to criticize the IAEA. They are doing a very important job in many difficult situations. But this criticism, I think they have brought on, on themselves. Thank you very much. I think we. Uh Yes, please. Short, please. Thank you. Uh, my name is Asbi Brown. I'm from SafeCast. Uh, this is also a question for Dr. Makijani. Um, as you pointed out, your, uh, your expert uh, panel from the Pacific Islands Forum has been an independent uh, you know, panel that's reviewing this work. Um, is there any possibility that the work of the expert panel will continue uh, from now on? Uh, will you be able to get funding, perhaps, uh, and be able to continue to uh, provide this independent oversight of the uh, uh, contaminated water release process? Well, uh, you know, this is, of, of course, up to the Pacific Islands Forum. And uh, we have not had any long-term discussions in terms of our role, nor uh, do we have any official role in terms of monitoring the impact or, or, or in convincing the government of Japan or the IAEA about anything. Uh, so far, I would say that we have tried our best to give our independent and sound scientific judgment from many different scientific, several different scientific disciplines. Uh, but our advice has been rejected and our judgment has been routinely rejected. Um, I do not know whether, you know, the Pacific Islands Forum may want to continue to have our advice and uh, you know, be happy to offer it to them uh, if it's uh, of much use as things go on. But, but that decision hasn't been made for the long term as yet. Thank you very much. Actually, I, I have such discussion before. They were, uh, this is not really a question, it's a comment. Maybe you can comment on that before we close up the session. There were many uh, nuclear weapons tests in the Pacific uh, by um, France mostly, and then uh, nothing happened. Basically, the, the Pacific is, seems to be okay now. So what's the difference between uh, discharging the water, uh, dumping the water, treated water or contaminated water, and such uh, nuclear uh, weapons uh, tests in the Pacific? Do you think I, it, it's still like the uh, same problem or different? Thank you. Oh, the nuclear wep weapons testing problems have been catastrophic. And they continue. I, I don't think you have looked into this issue. I'm one of the authors of a 1991 book called Radioactive Heaven and Earth. You can download the full thing for no cost at IER.org. Last year, Dr. Ruff from Australia and I did a series of 11 papers, one on each site, including the French site in, in Polynesia and the US site in the Marshall Islands and, and the British sites on the Christmas Islands in Kiribati. And, um, the, the impacts are extremely serious and they are continuing and you can read about the huge amounts of radioactivity that still exist in the environment. The traditional occupations and diets have been destroyed, a primary reason for the prevalence of diabetes. So it's not only radiation harm, but other kinds of harm from the destruction of the cultures, societies, and occupations and diets uh, that have happened. I'm most familiar with the Marshall Islands, uh, but this has happened in other uh, parts of the Pacific as well. I think, uh, the impacts on testing were absolutely huge. I can safely say that the impacts from 
this dumping will be small, but dumping on people and in a region who have already suffered an injustice from imperialist, and I use the word advisedly because the Marshall Islands was a trust territory of the uh, United States on the part from the United Nations, and I think it's generally acknowledged, including by the rapporteur of the United Nations, that that trust was violated in the way the country was seriously, seriously um, disrupted and parts of it were literally de destroyed. The first thermonuclear test actually totally evaporated an island. Uh, and that wasn't the only time that happened. So I think I think you're not very well informed. I'm sorry to say so. I'd be happy to send you some materials um, that testing did not have harm. It had extremely serious harm. I, it's safe to say that this this particular dumping will not fortunately reach that level of harm, but you're harming people who have already been seriously harmed. It's like telling a person that you have contributed to their illness and then you're going to contribute more, even if it is much smaller. That is not an appropriate way to proceed. Thank you very much for your insights. Uh, this will wrap up our event, and uh, I would like to thank very much uh, Dr. Makijani and uh, Mr. Uh, scientist, actually, Korikawa, and uh, Nukushina for your uh, presentations, and also uh, our interpreter, Kumano-san. Thank you very much, everybody, also for attending here and online. And uh, I thank think the debate will continue. And we hope you write a lot about this, and we might have more in the future. Have a nice evening. Thanks. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you very much.